Let's see how we can share a MySQL database. In this video, we'll learn how to create a data dump file of a database using MySQL Workbench. We'll also learn how to import the MySQL data dump file onto our server using MySQL Workbench. Here we are in the home screen of MySQL Workbench. Your view may vary as the MySQL Workbench can look different depending on which version you have or which platform, Apple versus Windows versus Unix, that you may be working with. While the view may be different, the features are generally the same, so it may be that you'll just have to find where the same features are. The first step is we need to make sure that we have an active server running. To do this, I'm going to click on New Server Instance. In my installation, I'll hit Continue, check the various settings, Usually those are okay. I'll hit continue. Notice it says nothing's open yet. You may continue if the server is simply not running as it says here. Hit continue through all of these. In my basic setup there's really nothing to change. I'll hit continue. Notice it's going to my SQL D at localhost is the name. I could change the name if I want to. And now I have a server instance and a connection to that server. My server may not be running though, so I'm going to double click on the server instance in the server admin window. Cannot connect, still it's not running. In my installation, it will come up with this admin page, and one of the first things I can see is that my server status is stopped. So I need to simply click on Start Server to make sure that it is running. After a moment, it will start to run and it will ask me for my password. Back to the home screen, now that I have a running server, I can check to make sure that my database exists on this server by looking at the new connection that was created when I made the server instance. When double click localhost connection, may again ask you for your password, type that in. Here I see I have one database called SIF underscore library. It currently has one table called books. I could view books by clicking here. Suppose I wanted to share this database with the professor or with a fellow team member on a project team. I have a couple ways I can do that. I can create something known as a data dump file, which is primarily a text file that contains all the SQL commands required to recreate this database. Or I can also share it as an EER model. Back at the admin screen, I'm going to work on creating a data dump. In my configuration, you see I have navigation along this area near the center of my screen, and one of those says data dump. Two choices. I can export to disk, which is what I want to do when I want to take a database currently in my SQL and make the dump file, or I can import from disk, which is the opposite. I want to be able to read a file that somebody shared with me and create a database within my server. To create a data dump, I'm going to click Export to Disk. In the databases, it shows several databases. Two of these are the default ones that come with MySQL. One is my Sci-Fi Library. And you'll notice it has one table selected because there is only one table in this database. If I had multiple tables, I could select the ones that I wanted to be part of the dump file. So the first step is to select the database you want to make a dump file. It could be one or more and which tables you want to be part of that. Most of the time when I do it, I just select them all for a particular table. I could create a dump project folder, which will include all of the schemas that I choose to dump, or I can create a self-contained file. The difference is, if I create a dump project folder, it creates a folder, and it will create a separate file for each of the schema within that dump folder. I could also use export to self-contained file. Here, if I've selected multiple databases, they will all still be in one single self-contained file. When you only have one database that you want to create the dump file for, either of the options can work. I'm going with export to self-contained file. I will note that it's in users Craig Piercy dumps, and let me call it scif.sql for short. You can do create dump in a single transaction, you can dump views, you can dump stored routines. My database is just a simple table, so there are no views and no stored routines. Not sure what create dump in a single transaction will get me, so I'll just leave that blank. Once I have noted where I want the file to be, I just simply start the export. You might need to also include your password. 
very quickly it showed that I've completed the export. Here I've got the finder window open. I wanted to show you that it actually created the export and what it looks like. You'll note from the file path that my SQL file should have been stored in users, Craig Piercy dumps. I can open that up and I see that there is currently scif.sql located here. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to right click and open this. Let me use text edit just to see the code. It's simple text data. If you're familiar with SQL, you should be able to look through here and see what this code does in terms of making sure that we create the schema, making sure that if a table exists we can drop it, but then recreate the new one according to the current structure and so forth. At this time, let's see how we can import a database from a SQL dump file. To prepare, I've deleted my database from my server. I can see that by going to my connection and I see that there are no open schemas. I can go to admin page, import from disk. I will choose either to import from a dump project folder or import from a self-contained file. Since I created the file using a self-contained file, I'm going to import that way. I'll click over here to navigate to the folder where I created the dump and I'll choose it. And at that point you should see the path and the file name for the file that you plan to import. Choose Start Import. You'll have to enter your password. Select OK. We'll say Import is running, then Completed, and you'll have some messages in the log. To see whether it worked, let's return to SQL Editor. There's a couple of refresh buttons. We're connected, so let's refresh the state of database structures here. And now you see the database that I imported is available and looks like it did before. In this video, you learned how to create a data dump file of a database using the MySQL Workbench. You also learned how you can import a MySQL data dump file into your MySQL server as a database. This has been a Piercy production.